Dundas's role is not unlike that of the role played by John Mackey of Whole Foods, who was publicly lauded as a vegan by numerous leaders of well-known animal advocacy organizations, though he was at the time and still is the CEO of one of the largest meat selling corporations in America. So one of the largest meat selling corporations in America, vegan, brought into the same little container in the human mind. Okay? This is a very powerful act, has huge consequences. The term vegan originated in the 1940s and it's connected with an uh, English person by the name of Donald Watson. And from the very beginning, what was the core of veganism? It was a decision not to participate in the exploitation of others. That's what it means to be vegan ultimately. In its historical proper sense, it means I am not going to participate in the exploitation of others to the extent I am capable of. It's very clear. So it goes without saying that whatever Mr. Mackey's personal dietary habits might be, as one of the largest meat sellers in America, it's quite difficult to imagine how he could be described as a vegan. Okay? That stretches the imagination to say the least. At an animal rights conference in the critical year of 2005, when this huge shift of embracing the industry and shifting the message toward the promotion of humane animal products really gained a lot of steam, um, the president of the largest farm animal sanctuary in the U.S. introduced Mr. Mackey, who was given the honor of keynote speaker at the, at the conference. And here is the introduction he received. Now this year, obviously, the title of this is The Power of One. Um, our next speaker is one powerful fella. He um, is one of the most influential uh, people in the food business in this country. He also happens to be an outspoken vegan. He's spoken out publicly to major media, like the New York Times, Newsweek, about being vegan. I've also had the opportunity to be in meetings with him where he is speaking with folks who are not vegan about the benefits of being vegan. So he does not shy away from who he is and speaking about what he is passionate about. Um, he also seeks to incorporate his personal values and, and desire for a more humane, more compassionate world uh, in the business world. And that can be quite a challenge. And I think each of us in our daily lives um, face such challenges, face uh, being vegan in a non-vegan world. So it is now my, and, and, and also he's a, a man who I've come to respect and, and, and admire greatly over the past several months as I've seen him in action uh, at meetings uh, among some people at his own business and otherwise. So anyway, it's now my pleasure to bring up uh, John Mackey. So when you think about what's going on in this moment, um, in, in my opinion, the word vegan was degraded and stripped of any connotation of what makes it such an inspiring ideal. The commitment not to participate in the exploitation of others for reasons of conscience. And so when a person who is one of the largest meat sellers in the United States is uh, connected with the word vegan over and over and over by um, numerous leadership figures in the animal advocacy movement, for all of the people out there who look to such leaders for guidance, for leadership, something really huge happens in their understanding of what it means to be a vegan. Okay, so, that, so somehow now veganism has been being connected with changing the ways that animals are used and killed. Okay, this is something new. And so Mr. Mackey is a very sophisticated businessman and I think like Henry Dundas, he had a very clear idea of what he was doing and why. So when he began to speak at this conference, you know, very similarly um, to the way that uh, Mr. Dundas rose up and began to decry slavery and the need for abolition and engaging the people who cared about the issue, well, let's listen to Mr. Mackey. Gene said something very important today when he got up to speak uh, at lunch and we saw those moving films about what uh, the Humane Society of the U.S. was doing and 
and all the different things that we were doing to help the animal victims in Katrina. But the thing that got me was when he said, yeah, over 6 million farm animals died. You know, for every cat and dog we saved, there were 6 million farm animals that died. That's, an, that's a lot of senseless death. And, God, we, we, in America we kill, if you count the, the farms, catfish and whatnot, I, I read it in the, uh, in the book, it's up to over 11 billion animals a year. I mean, it's incredible, the slaughter that's going on. And Hearing this, we can picture ourselves being in a conference, seeing someone who's a very charismatic, so-called captain of industry, Fortune 500 leader, talking this way, there's a sense, oh my God, he gets it. He gets it. He understands the scope of this. And there's this sense of rejection of it. But wait till you see where we go. So he goes on uh, later in his talk to discuss how he worked together, how he brought together a coalition of uh, those involved directly in the exploitation of animals and animal organizations to develop a new set of standards, which at that time were called the Animal Compassionate Standards for the Use and Killing of Animals. So animal advocates, uh, leadership figures from some of these large organizations came together with people from industry, met behind closed doors, and hashed out what would be acceptable. And so he discusses this. This process is a multi-stakeholder process. And the way it works is, is we brought in all these activist groups that you see down here, uh, AWI, BVUSA, PETA, HSUS, ARI, and Farm Sanctuary have all, have all participated. And if there's some other group here that's participated that I just left out, sorry, uh, talk to me afterwards. You're not invited to the meetings anymore. Uh, no, uh, I think that's everyone that's participating. We also have the producers come in. And uh, there's a, a species at a time, and it's a quite a fa And then we have a, a Whole Foods people that are there. We have animal experts, uh, 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 and they're all, they're all animal experts who are, uh, care deeply about animals, and uh, PETA and VIVA make sure that there are uh, vegan-type veterinarians that are there that, uh, uh, so that there's or vegan, uh, our animal expert scientists so that there will be a wide representation of science experts there. Because, uh, you know, oftentimes you get into kind of a disagreement between what the producer says and what the animal rights people say, and... I mean, heck, Whole Foods doesn't know what to do. So we always we have to kind of refer back to the uh, to the animal experts, and they need to sort of guide us. Um, we also have an, our auditor there. So we're all together in this room, and uh, we basically kind of hat point by point. We sort of go through it, and uh, we're getting better at it. Boy, it took a long time to do ducks, uh, but we're getting a lot faster with it now because we've, we've we've got enough species that we're beginning to learn what works and what doesn't work. So remember, the framework of this presentation is. John Mackey, vegan role model, gathering together with the standard bearers of animal advocacy in the United States to develop and endorse these standards for using and killing animals. The meaning of veganism, the core of it, a commitment not to participate, he uses the word, they all participated. So in other words, veganism as a concept cracked. It's cracked, it's opened up, and now it's free for reinterpretation and commingling now with the act of exploiting others. And he talked about, you know, how this is a gold standard that we're creating. And, you know, what I want you to do is once we do this, I want you to go out and bash my competitors and, you know, tell Safeway that they can't, you know, that you're saying we can't do it. Well, look at Whole Foods is doing. You should do it. And, you know, the idea is enlisting the animal advocates in the work of promoting these standards and saying that's what your activism should be if you really care. And then that you know, troublesome activist in the crowd who's feeling a little uncomfortable and you know, just not quite certain why, gets up and asks him, uh, you know, Mr. Mackey, uh, you know, well, wh why, you know, why do you sell veal? You know, you're trying to be on the cutting edge. And you know, what, what about that? And then when he, when he speaks, he reveals what his actual value system is, what he actually serves, what his actual priorities are. So this is a telling reveal of what is under the facade. And veal? Whole Foods veal is, is very humanely raised. It's not tethered. It's not anemic. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's humanely raised as, uh, as, any, as any cow is humanely raised. So 
Uh, we don't see that it, it's, if, it's a, if it's a crime to kill a, an adult cow, it's a crime to kill a, a, a baby calf. I mean, same argument can be made for lamb or anything else. I mean, um, Whole Foods is a grocery store, and our customers want to they want to buy dead animals. And uh, I've already made I've already answered this. If we stop selling that, we're going to go out of business. And uh, we, it, it can't happen because we can't. I mean, uh, I can't stop it. I can't stop it. If we don't do that, we'll go out of business. Therefore, the only way we can help the animals is to continue to raise and kill and sell them by the millions. This idea was put forth by the CEO of a Fortune 500 company to a room full of animal advocates, and the sale was made. The sale was made, okay? At least to these large organizations that got on board with this and formally endorsed it to the public. Okay, so if you wonder why there is a certain amount of struggle and conflict within the world of animal advocacy in our particular era, I would trace a great deal of it actually back to this time in 2005 when industry was allowed to come right into the center and start dictating the meaning of our, the concepts that guide our vision. And, and people that were so caught up in large scale exploitation were held up as role models. So four years after this, so uh, after being endorsed by 17 animal organizations with a high profile media blitz, that really branded Whole Foods as the, quote, animal-friendly meat seller. Okay, very successful. New York Times articles, a lot of TV coverage. None of these standards were ever implemented. But the public is largely not aware of that. The impression was made. Whole Foods is a visionary. They're going forward in a new direction. They care about animals. And actually, all of this endorsement was given by all these animal groups before anything had actually been done. Nothing ever was done. <laughs> 